This is my journey through tarot. Come on. So Princess Anne, what do we know about her? Let's talk about that. So Anne is the Princess Royal, and she chose, I mean, she's the second uh, in line, uh, if that were possible when she were born, because Charles was the first, Anne was the second child, and then Andrew was the third, um, but uh, Anne would never be considered uh, in line to the throne. So Anne found herself pretty much in a similar situation as far as her lineage to uh, the throne as Harry finds himself with William. So it's interesting if we look at how Anne has lived her life and how she chose to um, deal with her children. They're not titled by her choice. They're Mr. and, and Mrs. So um, there we go. It's interesting to look at Anne, Princess Royal. What does she think of this Harry debacle? So Princess Anne, safe to say she's the hardest working royal in Britain. And uh, so she's number two. Of course, uh, Charles was number one. She was a second child. This is the um, Rider Waite Smith uh, deck. So these are the cards that uh, are most closely aligned with how these cards should look. Okay. So, you know, I like to take this time to give you guys kind of a visual feast and see what the cards look like. In case you hadn't looked at the entire deck and um, also it's a good way to kind of mix them up and get us started on their divining journey um, these are beautiful cards hoping that the Sun doesn't uh, give too much of a shine on these today I'm right in front of the window but I don't have lights on in the room and I'm hoping that that helps with how these cards look but, you know, I thought today I'd talk about Princess Anne. You know, she's a perfect example of how you get on with this business. Now, she was raised completely royal. So she she knew what to expect. Um, Harry and William, I would say their upbringing was certainly different from what Anne and Charles experienced. Um, and then, of course, there's the loss of their mother, which is traumatic. And one wonders, how was that void filled? Because it wasn't Camilla. Camilla was never their, you know, new mom or the substitute mom. There was something else that worked there. But whatever it was, it certainly put them on a different path from Anne. She works. She never stops. She never expects um, that her children would be part of the burden, I suppose you could say, of the royal coffers. Um, she, Anne's first husband was uh, an Olympian in um, equestrian. Anne herself then was an Olympian. Anne's daughter, then Zara, <laughs> was an Olympian. So, you know, there's a lot of proving on your own what your worth is in this branch of the royal family. So we'll see what the cards tell us about Anne. She was always the no-nonsense type of uh, royal. You know, didn't want to get on. That she was, as a matter of fact, was was shot at in her car, was accosted, or tried to be, uh, someone tried to accost her, and she simply refused to let that happen. So that gives you an idea of uh, what this woman is made of, I suppose. And we'll see here what she thinks what the cards will say about her regarding this last debacle. The signifier card for Anne uh, regarding her feelings towards this uh, Meghan and Harry situation is the King of Pentacles. And uh, Anne is the king of her own world. She certainly knows, uh, you know, in, in, in the days of knights and kings, you know, you might have several kings who, who could be beholden to one uh, emperor in the area. I suppose. I hope that makes sense. But Anne is the king of her own world. She's in charge of her own pentacles. And uh, and she set that example. And probably not really so much meaning to set the example. It was just a sensible thing, obviously, to do. She knew where her brother was headed. And so she may as well make a place for her.
itself, separate from that. Challenge to that is the King of Swords, the actual king, of course. Enough said. And the base of the reading is perfect for Anne because this is who she is. She's uh, not just the apprentice, though. This uh, Eight of Pentacles, she's the one who's always working. She's always got something lined up, ready to uh, ready to line up to be worked on next. And that's who Anne is. She's a machine. She's a royal machine. They say she's the hardest working royal. In the past for Anne is the Ten of Pentacles, which, of course, she recognizes that she had a charmed life full of pentacles and this is also the organization of the uh, monarchy in the sky for Anne, the star she absolutely is the star but she's sort of the hidden star she's the one who who all the family knows her value and uh, she's the trusty uh trusty uh workhorse of the royal family uh, the near outcome for Anne then is the lovers and that's who she is she makes sure she knows her what her place is she knows what your place is and she knows how to bring everybody around to a, a satisfactory conclusion. That's what Anne is all about. The uh, self for Anne in this regard is the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is perfect for Anne because this is someone who has the secrets. She has a book of knowledge. This is the Torah in this case. Uh, she stands between the pillars of Solomon, Solomon's tomb, uh, fruitful and knowing when to uh, dispense her knowledge and her wisdom. That is Anne to a T. Uh, she's in the environment of celebrations. Yeah, she's in the environment of the, the foolish uh, sort of um, light goings on that the young members of the royals do go through. And I think she fully expects that. Somehow she was able to steer her kids in another direction, but she fully understands, especially if you look into the foolishness that was going on when she was a young woman, not necessarily around her, but possibly around her brothers and other um, uh, high-ranking members of the royal family. So that's the environment that she's in now again, and she completely understands it. It's not a it's not a detriment to her at all. The hopes and fears, however, would be the Six of Pentacles, which is doling out uh, everything in its measure. Not only the wealth of the family, but the guilt and the uh, blame that uh, th this family is is going to have. And if if you have caused some blame, then you need to take your share, and we'll take this share, and we'll balance it out, and then we'll just get on with uh, what's going on. That's the hope and the fear that uh, when there's blame, that we know enough to balance out the blame and get on with it. The final outcome for this uh, reading for Anne is perhaps being uh, offered something that um, she knew she could never take. I'm just going to leave it at that. The three, of, the Four of Cups is uh, a, an offer that you don't want or an offer that you have to refuse. And, um, and you, you certainly have plenty now, and it just doesn't make perfect sense to try to go after this piece when you know you have perfectly well enough all that you all that you can handle uh, as it is right now. That's Anne. That's who Anne is, the Princess Royal. Perfect. You know, that reading came to me in just a very straightforward, matter-of-fact way, and I think that's just exactly uh, who Anne is. She is just completely uh, in control of her destiny and is very happy uh, with it being that and not willing to try to make it anything more than what it is. So Anne uh, is forever the star. And having been setting all that, my name's Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on back tomorrow. I'll be right here, and we'll take the journey together. Ciao for now.